A lot of nonprofits, churches, ministries, those kind of organizations create fundraising videos. They may raise money for a museum, a outreach to the homeless. It may be building water wells or human trafficking, whatever it is. A lot of organizations create videos with the purpose of raising money. The problem is they don't raise very much money. Today, we're gonna to talk about why. Hi, I'm Phil Cook, and welcome to this episode. You know, fundraising is a big deal, and very, you know, a lot of people are uncomfortable with the whole concept. But the truth is, if you're a nonprofit, if you work at a church or a ministry, or you're doing great things in the world, or you have a great cause you want to solve, fundraising matters. You've got to generate some kind of an income in order to change the world, and at least change your part of the world. And fundraising videos are a powerful tool. The problem is most people don't know how to use them effectively to actually get, to get people to support your vision and what you're trying to do. So I've done this for a long time. Our team has, has created hundreds and hundreds of fundraising videos from everything you just can't imagine all the causes over the years that we've created these videos for. And after doing so many, we've learned a few techniques that I wanted to share with you today. So when you create fundraising videos, you can really make an impact out there and hopefully inspire people to give and support your vision. So here's five things I want you to think about. Number one, don't create a music video. Uh, this is probably the biggest offender I see. You know, I don't care how much you love that new worship song by Chris Tomlin. I don't care how much you love that ballad, that, that song that opened the Olympics that you love so much. It doesn't matter. It doesn't tell me the kind of story that will make me want to open my wallet and support what you're trying to do. Music videos are not your chance to do a demo reel. Uh, they're not your chance, you know, when it comes to fundraising videos, it's not your chance to be the superstar. The purpose of a fundraising video is exactly that. It's not to put you on the map. It's not to build your demo reel. It's to call people to action to support your vision and what you're trying to do. So I see so often people find a, a song they really like and it's really emotional and it really gets them, in, you know, teary, teary eyed, but it's not what you need to do for a fundraising video. So ditch the music videos and do something that will help you tell your story more effectively. Number two, keep it short. Keep it short. In, in other videos and in, in, uh, episodes I've done on short films and how to do films effectively, I always talk about keeping it short. For most of you know the past, we've known that about 66% of viewers will bail after about two minutes. So we always wanted to keep it short. Uh, early days, people were kind of uncomfortable watching short films or videos on their mobile device. But guess what? Today, that's changed. Today, um, what I hear from friends of mine at Facebook and Vice and YouTube and places like that is people are far more comfortable watching up to seven minutes. So you can, and that's going to even expand more, I think. So you, I still will default to three to six minutes, to be honest, but keep it short. My, my feeling is it's like an elevator pitch. You know, in Hollywood, we have what we call an elevator pitch, which means if you meet a studio executive in an elevator, can you go up one, two, three floors and during that short time, pitch him your movie effectively? So you have to know it really well. It's got to be short. It's got to be punchy. It's got to be to the point. The same is true for a fundraising video. If you can't tell your story in two, three, four, maybe five minutes, then you don't know it well enough. So keep it short. It's very, very important. Um, I've talked, I've used the quote before. This is rules my life. I've used the quote before the, you know, from the great opera singer who said, make sure you've stopped singing before the audience has stopped listening. Man, that's true when it comes to producing a fundraising video. Make sure that video ends before that person is checked out mentally. So keep it short. Uh, the third thing I'd say is, a, a successful fundraising video is not about facts. Now, this is counterintuitive because most people think if I'm going to raise money, I need to tell them about all the homeless people we've taken in, all the meals we've served, all the girls we've we saved from human trafficking or all the people we've you know led to Christ or the number of people that have joined our church. Whatever your cause is, we feel like we need to give the donor facts. You know what? Yes, it's true, but not in the video. Give them facts, put them on the website, put them in a brochure, put them in a print medium. If you talk about the right medium for a video, it's about emotion. I should say, if you're talking about the right execution for a video, it's about emotion. Print, always think in terms of facts are for print, emotion is for video. So when you're doing a fundraising video, I want you to pull at somebody's heartstrings, tug at their heartstrings because that's really critical. 
Okay. So, and by the way, fancy statistics and fancy graphics and whirling things, uh, not necessary unless that really contributes to telling an emotional story. But I don't care how fancy you get with graphics. If you're spouting statistics about how your effective your work is, it's not going to make for a great fundraising video. As I say, facts matter. So if you've done a great work this year, put it on your website, put it in a brochure, mail it, email it to people. But in the video, I want to see a life that was transformed because of what you've done. I want to see the result of your work, and that's what will engage potential donors far more effectively. Um, number four, do it well. Do it well. Let me tell you something. This is not just an interesting video you're trying to share with people. You're actually trying to give pe cause people to step up open their wallet and support your vision. So I'm sure your brother-in-law has a nice camera. I'm sure he knows Photoshop. Uh, I, I'm sure that's awesome. But let me tell you, it's time to go to a professional. When you want people to really do something specific, go to a professional. Don't short, don't, you know what? Just don't shortchange your effort by doing an amateur fundraising video. It will always come back to bite you. I think that's so very, very important because fundraising is critical to organizations. If you can't raise the money to make your organization work, then you failed. So do it well, do it well. We live in a world today that's media driven and people are used to seeing video. Obviously people see, you know, the Instagram channel, they see videos on social media. And, and I think you can get by with being truly authentic and stuff you shoot on an iPhone. But I think the more you want people to act, I would like to do it in a convincing professional way. So whatever you can do to make sure it's done well, do it. Because in many cases with donors, you get one shot. You get one shot. And I think, uh, maybe I'm old fashioned, but the way you present something says a lot about who you are and says a lot about your standards for your organization. So if you're doing shoddy stuff, if you're doing low end stuff, if you're getting you know somebody from your high school youth group to do it who doesn't really know what he's doing, that's just going to say something about the level of professionalism at your organization. And trust me, donors respond to that. And I, I'd say number five, and this is really, really important. Have a call to action. We call it a CTA, a call to action. You've heard that term before, I'm sure. But I'm just amazed at the number of videos that people send to me for fundraising who they don't actually tell me what to do. They don't ask me to do anything. They don't, they cast a vision, but don't ask. And, and trust me, we, we have clients, we work with churches and ministries and nonprofit organizations, our team does all over the world, helping them craft these kind of videos. And we often get pushback. Well, you know, I really don't want to, I don't want to be too pushy. I really don't want to ask people for money. Well, why are you doing it? Why are you doing it? Don't do it if you're not going to ask. People want to be told what to do. And I'm not saying that in a crass way. People want you to share your vision and then they want to know how they can help how they can be a part of it. I look at fundraising just personally as a, you know, it's not about asking people for money. It's asking people to partner with your vision. How can they be a part of something bigger themselves, bigger than themselves to help go change the world in some way? That's what fundraising, fundraising is really all about. So this is critical. Get rid of this notion that you're bugging people, you're bothering people, that asking them for money is wrong. If you can cast such a compelling an emotional vision for what you're trying to do, people will want to be a part of it. And, and obviously, some people will, some people won't. The people that want, if you've done it well, then they don't feel like they've been bothered. They don't feel like they've been hammered. They're good. They're good. They don't, this is not something they feel called to support. Great, move on. Find the people that are and give them a pathway to being a part of it. So the CTA is very, very important. Be specific. Ask them what you want to do. Sometimes, it could be multiple levels. Sometimes you want, you know, a person could give at this level, a person could give at this level, a person could give at this level, whatever, be specific and give them an idea of what good they could do in the world by being a part of it. So those five things are what I've discovered that make the difference between a nice music video that just kind of talks about what you do and something that's powerful, compelling, and will help tell your story in a way that makes people step up and want to be a part of it. Fundraising videos. I, I've said before on this, the, these episodes that, that video short videos are now the number one marketing tool in America. They take up more bandwidth. I'm told than anything short of Amazon prime or Netflix. So why wouldn't you want to share your vision and raise money and develop your donor base 
through short videos. It's a powerful tool, and we'd love for you to, you know, come talk to us. Our team is really into this because we've, we've seen its effectiveness in so many different ways. So thanks for joining us today. Remember, fundraising, you know, it's important to do if you're a nonprofit organization because you need to fuel your efforts to go out there and change the world. Come visit me at philcook.com, my blog, P-H-I-L-C-O-O-K-E, and uh, subscribe to our iTunes Uh, podcast, our YouTube channel, go on, review it. Those kind of reviews mean so much to us because they open it up for other people to see it. And it really does make a difference. So please go give us a good review and share it with people. If you know people that are struggling to finance their organization, like in this particular episode, if you're, if you know people struggling to finance their organization, send them this episode because it could really make a difference for what they're trying to do in the world. Thanks. Keep watching. Keep subscribing because we got more great things coming up.